or rock stars. What's worth exploring at this point is Plato's controversial position on poetry, for there are a number of highly relevant parallels with rap music in general and 50 Cent in particular. Poetry for the Greeks was not the solitary and individualistic written pursuit that it is generally understood to be today. As I already mentioned, poetry was the mass medium of the day, the most effective way to capture the attention and influence a large group of people. The poets performed their art through acting, music, and dance, typically before a large group of mesmerized people who interacted almost hypnotically or mindlessly with the performer. Traditional poetry, of course, emerged out of an oral society. Prior to the advent of the written word, poetry enabled a social group to transmit its past, including its political, social, and moral ideas from generation to generation. In the ancient Greek tradition, the great poets, Homer and Hesiod, were seen as the primary purveyors of the oral tradition. Long after their works were written out and used, and used as the primary text of all Greek school children, roving poets or disciples continued to enact their colorful interpretations at commonly held public events. Moreover, many parents believed that knowing Homer's poems by heart and being able to perform them was a necessary condition to becoming a model citizen. But what were these traditional poems about? And why did Plato feel the need to reform or even banish them? You are all familiar with Homer's two great masterpieces, the Iliad and the Odyssey. And you know about many of the main characters, or heroes, as the Greeks called them. For instance, Paris, Hector, Achilles, Agamemnon. They're like brand names, with, but with thousands of years of staying power. While the Trojan War was an historic reality, what irked Plato was that some of the heroes, whether real, imagined, or embellished, could appear emotionally unstable and thus make unworthy role models. For example, instead of seeing Achilles as a sensitive man who wasn't afraid to express his feelings, Plato thought he was a big crybaby. In the Homeric poems, the god themselves, including the head honcho Zeus, are portrayed as jealous, conniving, vindictive, adulterous, and cruel. The other iconic poet, Hesiod, explains how the gods in the world were born of a series of cruel, bloody battles between many generations of interrelated, dysfunctional god families. It was also Hesiod who conceived the famous Pandora story the first mortal woman who was condemned as the god's most diabolical gift to mortal man. To bring this into today's context, you can see how some things change but remain the same when you consider 50 Cent's infamous misogynistic diatribes against women. Try this one. Girl, I'm missing you. Come and see me soon. Tie your arm up. Put that lighter under the spoon. Now, put the needle to your arm, princess. Stick it in. Relax, you fat bitch. Don't ever try that again. The surprising fact is that you don't have to look too closely to find comparisons between the works of Homer and Hesiod, other religious masterpieces like the Bible, and even some of the lyrics from our rapper friends. There are literally hundreds of passages in the Old Testament where we see a jealous, vindictive, vicious, misogynistic God punishes indiscriminately. So it wasn't so much poetry that bothered Plato. It was the social instability caused when young people were taught to believe that the ancient texts were the gospel truth and that the gods and heroes should be believed in and emulated despite their fatal flaws. To get around this problem, many interpreters of ancient texts from antiquity on have taken the position that they are meant to be understood not literally, but allegorically. But as Plato pointed out, this still, not, this still did not resolve the issue that such texts were recited to young people 
who were not mature enough to distinguish fact from fiction. So great was Plato's concern about warping young minds that he publicly accused the iconic poets of disseminating outright lies about the heroes and the gods. In doing so, he basically dismissed the entire Greek religion and mythological dish tradition as being blasphemous. To put this in perspective, this would be the same as a powerful leader today proposing to ban the Bible or the Koran on the grounds that they are filled with lies. But Plato was unapologetic, as he wrote himself, and I quote, in sum, none of the stories of God's dealings with humanity can be true. And even if some are true, they are morally unsuitable for the ears of the young. Okay. So Plato would have many of the gods and heroes reformed or banished. And what about those nomadic messengers who spread the word? Well, Plato not only criticized the content of poetry, but the dramatized way in which it was delivered. Early poets didn't just imitate their chosen role models, no matter how nefarious. They would believe so fervently in them that they would take on their personalities and through the passion of their performance, encourage their followers to do the same. This trance-like osmosis helped solidify Plato's hard line about the perils of poetry. Haven't you noticed, he asked, that the imitations practiced continuously from youth settle into habit and in nature in the body, voice, and thought? Plato was on stinting in his view Excuse me. And here we are, some 2,500 years later, more worried than ever about the influence of performing artists on impressionable minds. Plato was on stinting in his view that the influences shaping a culture had to be controlled to properly educate and raise children, and ultimately create a society that enabled all, without exception, to flourish. In this harmonious and just society, the guardians or leaders would play a paramount role. They themselves would be scrupulously prepared for their chosen task through a long and rigorous education and exposure to only the finest of role models. Of course, few people today would argue that the control of any city or society should be in the hands of one, any one appointed person or group. But many of us would question the state of world politics and affairs. Harmony and justice are not words that readily come to mind. Perhaps then we need to question not whether 50 Cent should perform, but why he exists at all. What in our society gives rise to such public forces? Is 50 Cent the product of a marginalizing and discriminating society? that is increasingly motivated by greed and power? And has 50 Cent himself now fallen prey to dark forces that caused him to rise up in rebellion in the first place? Has the exploited become the exploiter through the power of his own brand? And what kind of influence does this have on young people? Plato would undoubtedly see 50 Cent as a symptom of our society. He believed that citizens are ultimately dragged down by society's weak values or lowest common denominators. These would include notions such as wealth makes the man, or reputation comes with financial success, or might, which comes with financial success, is right. Society and moral decadence, observed Plato, originate at the top, a view, unfortunately, only too well supported by history. Alas, inspired leadership is a rare commodity. Today, it is almost impossible to imagine a major role model without making monetary success part of the equation. So in the end, it is probably assigning too much value to 50 Cent to say he is a major factor in the corruption of youth. Unbridled consumerism, which preys on all of our weaknesses with this mantra that you can never be good enough or have enough, and is delivered to people everywhere through multiple forms of mass media, 